Hey guys, welcome back. The paint job on my Porsche 911 continues this week. They call it a paint job for a reason. It's like a full-time job. Garage time. So you'll notice that I spun the car around in the garage and I did some more work on the front. I block sanded the hood and I actually found a couple more waves in the hood. So I applied another coat of 2K primer on the hood to try to smooth that out. And then also if you remember, I sanded through on the driver's door to bare metal. So that has been repaired. I did epoxy primer and more 2K primer on the door in this cal area. So I need to let that material dry. I like to leave it outside a couple days so that all the shrinking can occur before I sand it. So I'm not gonna work on the exterior this week. I'm gonna work on the back. So I have never finished the inside of the wheel arches. When I welded the flares on, um, I did a lot of work to smooth out the outside, but the inside is still untreated. So I'm gonna work on that and also the seat pans that I installed. I never um, finished epoxy primer and undercoating on those areas. So this is a good time to work on that because it's gotta get done. This just hasn't been um, epoxy primered, hasn't been touched up. Also, all this bracketry here, these camber pivots were added. Um, if you're new to the channel, this was a substantial modification to change the inner pivot points. And those brackets are just bare metal. Those have to be taken care of. If you look back here, like through this oil um, inlet, you can see that this is where the flares were added. And there's a weld line there and all that undercoating has been removed. And also, uh, it's just bare metal as well. I mean, a little yellow got oversprayed on that. But I need to remove the suspension and the tires to get access to those pivots, but also the seat pans. And then when the tires are off, it's gonna be much easier to treat the inside of the fenders. These are the three mounting options for the inner pivots. And just like that, the uh, rear banana arms are out, all the suspension. Um, this has been out many times, so it makes it pretty easy removing it back and forth. You can see those uh, solid shocks on there. That's um, actually been pretty convenient for me. It's nice to have the wheels in a fixed position and they don't articulate. So when it comes time to moving the, the car around in the garage, it makes it pretty easy because it stays flat. So this doesn't need to be perfect underneath here. It just needs to be protected. So all this bare metal is gonna get treated with epoxy primer. I'm gonna shoot some of the undercoating on and then just dust it in some black paint. Okay, this is the rear fender area. It's a lot easier to get to now that the suspension's off. And you can see that the flare area here is still bare metal and it's got a little bit of surface rust on there. I need to take care of the surface rust and treat this with epoxy primer. Also, you can see on the very top up there, that's where some of the undercoating has failed and I chipped it away earlier when I was doing the flares. But uh, I need to come back and, and coat this with epoxy primer, make sure all the rust is out, all the weak undercoating is gone. Also right here you can see this is where the gussets were welded onto. 
and that area has been um, disturbed and so that has to be fixed as well. You can see that I have the car supported by the sway bar mounts, which generally is not a good idea, but I reinforce these with those plates. Sorry guys, there's not a lot of action footage this week. Um, it's really difficult to film underneath there. It's upside down. I got cords and hoses. My legs are swinging around and uh, it just knocks the camera over. So it's uh, difficult to do um, and difficult to film and do at the same time. So I'm sure you can appreciate that. It's really the same technique as I did the engine bay with. I have these wire brushes, you know, with an extender, extender on it. This is a little bit less extended. This is the stock, you know, wire wheel, and then I'm using the strip it discs. I'm also using the uh, the the hand uh, wire brushes and also nylon brushes with the degreaser, just going around and degreasing everything. It's all pretty grimy underneath there, but I think I got it really clean now. And most importantly, I got all the rusty metal from underneath where the undercoating had failed. I got all that cleaned up, and it's looking uh, pretty good. So before it starts to flash rust again, I need to get the primer on it. Oh, and I did use uh, phosphoric acid on some of the areas that were difficult to sand. And I treated it with phosphoric acid and then um, also had to wipe it off with, uh, neutralize it with water. So that's another reason why I need to primer it right away because once you neutralize it, it starts to rust again really quickly. But that's required by the epoxy primer. You can't have any residue on it. It has to be completely clean. So I'm gonna do that right now and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Time for the creep review. Okay, I suppose this is gonna be hard to see because everything's black, but uh, you know, this is two coats of the epoxy primer. Okay, this area here is the kidney bowl area and the latch panel, and this is a highly rust prone area. So I've done my absolute best, aside from sandblasting the whole car, to clean everything out, treat the metal, get the epoxy primer in there really well. And I think I did a pretty good job on this, although it is going to require some frequent inspection just to make sure everything's holding up. Okay, underneath here, everything looks, you know, pretty good. It's just all black, but it's very tidy. And you can see that the areas that I added, like the um, suspension pan spots, those are very shiny. Everything else still has the factory undercoating on it. So I'm going to be uh, adding in some undercoating here just to sort of match it a little bit and uh, keep it from vibrating. Okay, one of the reasons the coverage is so good is because I used a uh, brush to get in all the tight spots first and then I came back with the spray gun and uh, I just really doused this whole thing. This is underneath the corridor window area, and it's also an area that really traps a lot of dirt and collects a lot of stuff. And then unfortunately on the driver's side, I ran out of primer. So I need to come back um, tomorrow and finish this up. I just, I just ran out just back here by the rear uh, bumper bracket. Okay, I'm gonna come back tomorrow after the epoxy primer has dried. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of seam sealer, just like I did in the engine bay, and then also some undercoat. And it doesn't need to look perfect. I'm really just trying to get it to, you know, blend in and uh, provide some protection against rocks and things like that. So this should be done tomorrow. Okay, I just applied uh, some seam sealer to the actual seams. And I applied a lot less than the factory did. That is because I don't want it to conceal anything below it. So I just want to, you know, feel the actual seams and then I wiped off any of the excess. I also put a little bit underneath here in sort of those areas that I welded right on the seams. But again, very, very thin. Okay, that seam sealer is gonna dry for probably at least an hour before I spray a little bit undercoating on. And just like I said about the seam sealer, I am not gonna go super, super duper heavy 
with the undercoating. Uh, I want it to uh, be effective at sort of preventing rock chips, but like in the corners and stuff where the factory had it real thick, that's where it tends to crack and fail. And then when moisture gets below it, you can't actually tell there's moisture below it and it just hides things. It doesn't actually uh, solve any problems. So I want to keep it really light so I can in the future go back and check these areas and make sure it's still doing its job uh, rather than just covering stuff up. In fact, if you're ever buying a car and it was freshly undercoated, it might be hiding a lot of stuff. I, in those cases, would either poke around or ask the owner for pictures before undercoating because it's great stuff, but if it's used incorrectly, it can hide a multitude of sins. Okay, I have no idea why I, I have the gray uh, undercoat. Um, I'm not sure if it comes in black, but it would have been a smarter choice. I know the factory is kind of a grayish, brownish color, which is why I got this, but uh, it would have been smarter to use black. Once again, I didn't put this on super heavy. I mean, you can still see all the indents of the sheet metal, and I want to keep it sort of easy to inspect later on. And then here's the texture on the flare. You can still see the weld line, which I'm totally fine with. Dinner time.